Then we're going to bring it through after we've corked it. We're going to put a capsule on. The capsule is going to protect the cork. We're going to spin the capsule tight over here. Over here, front and back label all in one gentle turn. And then off to our warehouse where it'll be aged for uh, a number of months or maybe a year until it's ready for you out in the market. So after we've created this, after two to six weeks, now you've created great wine, but it's very young, very harsh in tannins and very harsh in acids, but incredible wine. So we're going to take it back to our French oak barrels and we're going to let it age in those barrels. Now the reason we use French oak is it's much more lusher and much more intense in its flavors but it doesn't have that vanilla coconut that a lot of American barrels do and it doesn't have the, the bitterness or harshness that some American barrels have. But it's much more to it than just French oak. Think of it as France is a big country. Uh, many different forests in France, each forest is going to give you distinct flavors and distinct uh, levels of uh, oak. So there's Allier, Trancé, Nevers, Limousin, Vosges, and Bourgogne. Those are the great forests of France, each giving you those uh, particular flavors. You're trying to take your uh, different varietals, or maybe even some blocks of vineyard that are more, uh, more intense or more uh, fruity, and pairing those for perfection. So that's what we're very good at here. Now, so you have each one of those racks are from a different distinct block of vineyard. You're trying to create this palette of different flavors, just like a painter creates many different paints to create a painting instead of blending it all together and then you have one color to do a painting. It wouldn't be very interesting. But by keeping each one separate, now you're able to create the perfect balance in wines and the perfect uh, intensities every year. One other thing, not only do you pick from different forests, but now you're going to cure those barrels. First you cure them by chopping them down, splitting them up, and leave them in the forest for three years. What you're doing is you're leaching out the harshness of the wood. So that's a top quality oak. Now you're going to cut those into staves, bring them into your factory or Tonier or Cooper. You're going to cut those into staves. You're going to build the roundness of the barrel now you're going to roll those to cure it now for flavor. You're going to roll it over an open fire. The amount of time you leave it over that open fire is going to change the flavors. Now 15 to 25 minutes over that intense heat is going to create a component called vanillin or vanilla flavors. So if you want that flavor for yours, you'll use mostly lightly toasted barrels. Now if you bump that up to 25 to 45 minutes, now you're actually caramelizing the sugar in the oak and that gives you the butterscotch, caramel, creme brulee sometimes you say. That's off that medium toasting. Heavy toasting, 45 minutes, an hour and a half. You're charring the inside of that barrel, creating not only the smokiness of the char, but you're now creating all these incredible layers of spices. So as a winemaker, you have to know these, uh, these flavors in order to know which vineyard to pair them with. So that's why a great winemaker knows everyone is his or her vineyards uh, just like the back of their hand so that they know exactly how it changes each, every year and how those flavors, how they're going to pair those flavors. So right now we're uh, getting ready to marry our next lot. These are red and people ask, why is some of the barrels tainted red? Because about every three weeks we're going to top every barrel up with wine because it's going to evaporate over time and that's softening tannins and acids. But also, you let it go too long and it's going to build oxygen on your wine to be detriment to your wine. So what you're going to want to do is keep those full. So we'll fill them up, but when you fill them up, the red wine's going to overflow a little bit and you're going to get the tincture of the red color on the barrels. So those are red barrels. You'll always use them for red wine because you put a white wine, you could have a rosé. So um, these are all the different forests, all the different components, all the different blocks that we'll use for finally marrying them. 
Now, once you get them all aged and they're, you're tasting these, every time you take them down and fill them up, you're tasting them to make sure all those barrels are perfect. <laughs> That's one of our incredible workers here. And they are all, they are really, everyone's from, uh, most of them from UC Davis or from one of the analogical programs around. Uh, but you'll finally get them aged. Now, rack by rack, you're gonna pull them down from a different block. You're gonna take that rack like they've laid this block down, you'll put it in one tank. Then you'll pull the next block down, put in the second tank until all your tanks are filled with different components. Now you're going to take a sample out of each tank, take it into a special room, and you're going to do ratios in every glass, maybe 50 or more glasses of different ratios from those tanks. Now you're going to do a blind sensory on it. And the one that comes the most balanced, the most layered, is your vintage glass. So you'll pull the card on that glass and it'll tell you proportions or ratios out of those tanks in that glass. Now you're gonna take your team and the team's gonna do the blending to that specific ratio and you have vintage. And then you'll go through taking your tests and uh, doing refining on your wine and then off to bottling. Okay? All right, let's go taste some wine.